Cool. Hi, Jack. There's people coming in. Mark, Shona, Kenneth. Good evening. Is it Friday yet? <laughs> <laughs> It oh, can't only be only Tuesday. Tuesday. It's only Tuesday. I can't believe it. <laughs> I think we just I think we'll bring the weekend forward this week, Rach. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'd welcome that. Yesterday I just was like, is it still Monday? Like, all day, really? Monday. Mm. <laughs> all day. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's starting to get to me now. I'm starting to lose. Um, a few things, like my marbles. Welcome everybody, lovely to see you all. Come on in. For everyone just joining us, as usual, we're just gonna wait a few moments to let everyone come into the room. You changed your top, Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> what you can't see, you can lose my little bit. We can't see to the left. I mean, there's a whole like wardrobe that I've got ready for that too, just in case. <laughs> and it does include this. It all goes about. If I start wearing this on our webinar, <laughs> I'm not gonna be lost it. <laughs> I think that. Actually, I think I do a Viking. Yeah, thing. I had a whole. Cool. Well, I think, Rach, if you're okay, we could just get started whenever you... Oh, <laughs> That's one suits you. I think just keep that one on. You need to speak yeah. so everyone can see it. I think so. <laughs> well, it's, it feels like we've been in this scenario for a long time now. So welcome. We've been joined by Boris Johnson, everyone. So <laughs> <laughs> This is actually um, my little boy's Beatles wig when he wants to pretend that he's in the Beatles. <laughs> Why would we not? And it's kind of fitting because today's session is all about playfulness and creativity. So uh, why not? So yeah, just... I can't just give a straight face looking at you with that thing on. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming and everybody joining us again. Believe it or not, it's only week five of our um, webinar series and podcasts together. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Rachel Brown. I'm part of Creative Entrepreneurs Club. Um, and we, the Creative Creative Entrepreneurs Club be all about upskilling, networking, and empowering the creative community within Scotland. So delighted that you've managed to join us. Um, today is going to be a really exciting session. We've got a wonderful person joining us, Lindsay Dunbar, who's the founder of Play Pieces and co-founder of the Rural Touring Agency. But, but Lindsay is also an accredited Lego serious play facilitator. So we're gonna dive into <laughs> playing with Lego today and we're gonna talk about how it affects our business, what we can do um, to do things differently, better. And, and actually for those of you who are in the creative space, we all know this, there's no time like now for playfulness and creativity. So before we get stuck in, as per usual, those of you who know the format now know that I hand over to Andrew is going to give us an introduction and actually maybe a few thoughts of his week so far and how things have been going at Made Breathe HQ slash home. Um, and then we'll dive into some questions. Feel free to ask anything at the chat box below. Keenan is with us as well and he'll be monitoring all the questions and all the Q&A stuff. And as per usual, we will finish bang on six because we know that we've all got busy lives and other things going on and multiple multiple things, eh, multiple eh, eh, responsibilities. As I started there, I can just hear my children might come in at any point, so we might have another eh, few audience members eh, to join in with the Lego stuff. So we'll just go with those go with those flows. Andrew, over to you. Thanks, Rachel. Thanks for everyone for coming and thanks, Lindsay, for joining us. Um, so yeah, for those who are uh, coming into our first webinar, um, I'm Andrew Dobby. I'm the founder of Made Brave, a creative brand agency out of Glasgow. 
Um, for those who don't know, yeah, uh, give a bit of context. Um, you know, uh, Rachel and myself came together a couple of weeks, well, five weeks ago now, isn't it? Um, one long day ago, um, and we created a couple of, um, I suppose, things to, to support the creative industry. So, of course, we have these webinar sessions. Uh, Rachel has also opened up the Creative Entrepreneurs Club platform where we offer um, a job board, we offer one-to-one -one support for anyone in the creative industries. It's all completely free. So if you head over to creativeentrepreneursclub.co.uk if you want to access any of that. Um, and then we also have a LinkedIn Creative COVID support group um, on LinkedIn. There's over 3,300 people in that group now um, and they're all helping each other, um, passing around jobs, networking and um, I suppose a little bit of moral support along the way as well. Um, so, you know, these, these webinars have all been about sort of, uh, I suppose, trying to bring in people to share some wisdom, share some thoughts, share some inspiration. Um, last week, we had Jared McKenzie Govan on the show. Um, Jared is the founder of The Blank Faces, which is a fashion brand out of Glasgow that aims to end homelessness. Um, we spent a lot of time asking Gerard about, I suppose, the effects that COVID has on his business um, and other social enterprises. And um, we also talked about adapting to business right now and, and how he was doing that. It was really interesting. Um, previous to that, we had John Latham on the show, who's a qualified uh, executive coach, mentor, and consultant. Um, and he um, uh, let's give a lot of practical um, advice around mental health um, and well-being and self-care. Um, we also had Mark Logan from um, the CEO of Skyscanner. Um, Mark talked us through a bit about resilience in these times and kind of how to, to plan for coming out stronger at the other side. Um, so if you want to listen to those, you can um, head over to the CEC website. Um, we've also popped them up on the Made Brave YouTube channel. So they're there for you to access at any time. There's lots of great little nuggets of gold in amongst them. So feel free to dip in and out of those. Um, obviously, creativity is very important. Um, it's a very important role in business, and it's very important just, you know, people are worried about their livelihoods and things. And, you know, being creative is very valuable at this time because we need creative solutions and creativity to, to keep us happy, to keep the people around us happy, and to keep us uh, succeeding in business as well. Um, so I'm very excited about today's session because obviously the business that we have and Keenan and myself at Made Brave spend most of our days having to be creative and often being creative on demand or when you're under stress or pressure can be very difficult. Although sometimes it can actually be very good. Sometimes when you have a real focus and a real clear brief and a real clear challenge, it can actually, um, it can actually amplify your creativity as well. So I, I'm always keen to learn new perspectives on creativity, learn new ways of thinking. Um, I've got a little eight-year-old that, that constantly um, keeps me inspired with my creative thinking and um, you know, so much so that we, you know, we'd recently much the rest of the UK has at this point as well. Um, but, you know, like doing some of that creativity has uh, helped me sort of bring in new ideas into my business. And we actually ran a webinar the other day with the kids. So if you want to go and check that out on the Made Brave channels, it was called Best in Class. And it was an absolute riot for uh, about an hour. My, my, my son and Keenan's daughter, Lucy, were on that. Um, so that was, that was really good fun. Um, but it's funny um, because, you know, off the back of these things that we sometimes think, oh, you know, you're wasting time having fun doing TikTok. I've been asked now to go and host a, a webinar and get paid to host a webinar on TikTok, right? So sometimes the things that we think about, you know, when we're doing things that are, we're passionate about or happy about, you know, they're not going to end up in work. If you can actually think out and do the things that you're passionate about, you end up getting paid for those. So it's much like creative people. And um, we always give the advice of if you've got a portfolio, you know, and people ask, how do I get work? Well, put out the work that you want to get back. So put out into the world what, you're, what you really enjoy, what you really want to do. And then people see that, they see you're passionate about it and they tend to pay you for it. Or, you know, so, they, so that's a perfect example with my tech, recent TikTok example that has now turned into some work for me and the team at Made Brave. So anyway, um, moving on, um, I'll let uh, Rachel do um, the introduction. Actually, I'm, we're very excited about the Lego. I don't know if you can see, I've got loads of Lego here with me today. I've just I've went and got this box out. There's tons of it. I've, I've realized I've got far too much of it. Um, and Rachel and myself actually visited, um, we were in Arus in Denmark. I don't know, was that two years ago, Rachel? Yeah, yeah, it was two years ago. Can you believe it? Two years last Christmas. Uh -huh. 
and and we were like really hung over in the morning and uh, we'd been a, we had a big night out the night before and like i can't remember how far away uh, lego house if you've not seen lego house look it up online it's amazing it's like it just looks like a giant version of a piece of lego um, and we 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 jumped on a train and went halfway across denmark i think to go to lego house just for a, a short while so so we're very keen to hear from a lego expert today so um i'll pass you over to rachel to do the, the formal introduction <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I should just caveat though, we were very hungover, but it was a really productive uh, work <laughs> evening. Yes, I have, uh, yeah. We were at the Creativity World Forum um, in Denmark, talking all things creativity, and we'd met up with some incredible people. We actually got on the train and, and um, it took us an hour and a half to get to the, the, the Lego house, after which we then got stranded in um, Amsterdam. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is why I don't remember any of it. <laughs> Straight from being hangover into Amsterdam, like that's that, that's that's why. So there was a creative adventure right there. <laughs> so for those of you who are just joining us, you're very very welcome, um, and I'm delighted to welcome Lindsay Dunbar. Hello. Um, hello, Lindsay. How are you today? Yeah, good, good. Yeah, the sun is shining. That really helps. <laughs> it really helps. So just let me get this right. Um, Lindsay, you're like an accredited Lego Serious Play facilitator. And I think you're mm -hmm. one of not many of you in the UK, actually. When I was looking, there's only a handful, um, maybe like six or so um, facilitators yeah. in the UK. So um, you might only be one of two in Scotland from what I can see. So um, we're delighted that you're with us. Um, as well as doing all the pieces about Lego, Lindsay um, is the founder of Play Pieces and it would be great to hear a bit more about that. And also Lindsay does some really incredibly uh, cool work with young people from a whole range of different uh, backgrounds and geographies, um, which is especially important at the moment and it's, it's mm -hmm. kind of Europe wide and it's incredible stuff. Lindsay's one of these people and it's the same as Andrew and Keenan are, um, typically creative and just kind of pops up everywhere. So it's really difficult to do a proper biog for Lindsay because she's done a bit of this, a bit of this, a bit of this, a bit of this, but it's all centered around creativity. But today, um, if you want to join in, please see, grab some Lego. If you don't have any Lego, don't worry about it. Make sure you've got some paper and pens to take loads of tips and tricks. Uh, so Lindsay's going to take Andrew and Keenan and I through some exercises. I've got my um, Captain America uh, motorbike with me um, and my trusty Dumbledore. Um, Some sort of duck thing <laughs> here. Duck thing. Oh, um, I love, love a Lego stuff. duck. You can never go wrong with a Lego duck. A whole box of stuff to learn and listen. Um, <laughs> one of the things that Lindsay does brilliantly is she works within um, a whole range of corporate environments, public environments, third sector environments, and helps people kind of make sense of their, their creativity, their playfulness, and translate that into real business. Um, problems, challenges, and ways to think about rebuilding your business. So what a better thing to do that than with Lego. When Lindsay and I were talking the other day, um, we came to the conclusion that um, we should just be sending everybody bags of Lego um, everywhere. It's kind of what's needed in this current lockdown environment. So that was a kind of unusual um, introduction because Lindsay is an unusual creative, if I can be so bold. Um, yeah, no, I love it. That's great. <laughs> that suits me so, fine. <laughs> I'm gonna hand. I realise being you. What's a usual creative? <laughs> yeah, that's actually very true. Very true. So, um, let us say, maybe, maybe then, if you, could you tell us in your own words how 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 do you describe yourself? What tell us? Tell the tell the people. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, this this is um, inspired by uh, a talk that uh, I heard Matt Baker from Dumfries and Galloway, an artist in Dumfries and Galloway. He manages the stove, and he used the expression a, a cultural crafter. And for me, that suddenly really resonated because you know I'm just tending and nurturing to creative projects, and you know whatever the weather you have to go out and, and deal with these things. And that just really resonated with me because I just, you know, being the daughter of a crofter from the West Coast, it's like, yeah, yeah, you know, it doesn't matter if it's freezing cold and it's dark, you've got to go out and feed the geese. I get that. And it's the same, it's the same in the cultural sector, basically. Um, and actually this looks really quite well uh, because for, for me, um, one of the things I realized fairly recently in the last few years is I'm quite a metaphorical thinker. Um, and 
when we're playing with Lego and if we're using it in the serious play context, it's all about metaphor. And so like I'm often sort of dropping metaphors when I'm trying to explain things all the time, which everybody does. But it just for me, it, that, that really, really works. And that's, yeah, so I'm definitely a metaphorical thinker and an unusual creative. I'll definitely go with that. But um, I think a cultural crofter for me just encapsulates uh, that kind of diverse range of things that I've got to go out and do because I love doing it. Cool. And, and I suppose um, in terms of kind of what kind of things are you working on at the moment and how has the COVID situation impacted you? Um, what does that look like? Yeah, well, fortunately, it hasn't impacted on my workload in a negative way. I'm incredibly busy. Um, Rachel mentioned some of the work that I do with young people. So we're actually part of a European wide project. There's 17 partners across the whole of Europe who are working with young people um, around the sustainable development goals and issues around migration and finding really creative ways to respond to that within local communities. And we were meant to be doing all sorts of amazing events in March. We were going to have a film festival about climate change. We were going to have a concert. Um, we were going to do all these amazing other things, a big installation about um, the impact of the rising seawaters in, in our uh, shopping centre to really sort of drum into people the impact and what we need to do about climate action. All of that cancelled, <laughs> like all cancelled. Um, but what has happened is all the activity has gone online now and mm -hmm. also as, as a result of COVID-19, actually the, the positive actions that young people are wanting to take has completely changed. So they're now recording podcasts and you know with their friends about the impact that the, the lockdown is having on their lives as young people. They are offering um, just chats, basically, Zoom chats with people for who English isn't their first language. And if they're in lockdown with their family, they're not going to be using English, which means when they go back to school or college or work, they're actually going to be disadvantaged because they're, they're not going to have been practicing in the way they should. So these young people are engaging with them over Zoom to make sure that they can practice on a daily basis. Um, and we've also got uh, the, the film nights now gone online as well. So they're going to be doing that on Sunday. So they're going to be doing a virtual film festival online, which is going to be incredible. Mm -hmm. And we've also got some musicians who are also taking part in the COVID Kaylee, which uh, musician Duncan Chisholm started. So they're just recording a piece of music just now that they've written themselves um, about an experience. Last year, we were fortunate enough to go over to Lampedusa, which is a small island in the middle of the Mediterranean, where a lot of migrants cross over and it's the first port in Europe that most of them can come to. Um, so it's called the Shores of Lampedusa and they've been recording it and they're going to be putting it out over the internet as part of COVID Kaylee. And these are all things that wouldn't have happened as a result of COVID-19. And I am a disgusting optimist, but I just really love it when something happens and there's these really positive reactions to something as terrible as you know this international pandemic so yeah we've been it's work is just the same for me as it has been before but in some ways it's more exciting because all of a sudden you, you feel like it's really meaningful the work that you're doing like it's great coming up with creative ideas but when you really see the impact that that's having on people's lives, it's so exciting. It's so exciting. And yeah, I think there's a lot of really lovely things that have come out of this whole experience, um, which I would love to see carry on. Like I'd love to see the, the young people um, supporting non-English speakers to be practicing out with, you know, all of this as well. That'd be brilliant. It'd be a great way for them to share cultural experiences and find out more about each other and stuff and, be, and just make our society a bit more inclusive that'd be amazing so yeah it's yeah i i'm i'm still in the optimistic zone with it all um but it's i'm aware that, that there's a lot going on for people and there's a great deal of uncertainty yeah um, i heard a, i heard a phrase the other day we're, we're we're not all in the same boat we're in the same storm which i think is quite appropriate because we've all got different sized boats and it's affecting us all differently but we are yeah but do you take shelter or do you learn to dance in the rain and it's like yeah <laughs> I like that. It's the dancing in the rain. We have to adapt. Yeah. So, Lindsay, you founded Play Pieces in 2011, based in Inverness, and you had a really interesting journey with that because you deliberately um, created something and then moved on from it. And I think for some mm -hmm. people at the moment, um, journeys are really important um, and they, it can feel quite negative, but actually it could be a really positive thing. 
Yeah, absolutely. I think, yeah, I think it's really interesting. I've, and I've had this conversation with a lot of people, um, especially in the third sector, but I think it's true for social enterprises and arts organisations as well. Sometimes uh, an organisation or it could be even just sort of a network, you know, there's always like a strong personality behind it. And you almost think of that individual before you think of the organisation. Um, and while that can be amazing, it also comes with huge risks as well, because for instance, if then something happens to that founder, you know, which is unexpected, it can have a massive impact. So when I started Play Pieces, I was adamant that I was not going to be sticking around. I just wanted to get it up and running and move on. Um, so that was, you know, my board were always aware of that all the time, nearly every single meeting I'd be saying that. So when I move on, when I move on. Um, so it was, it was, I never wanted it to be about me. And I, I think a lot of people did kind of see it as me. And I didn't like that because it wouldn't have, it, there, there would have been no need for play pieces if there weren't the theatre makers in the Highlands. There would have been no need for play pieces if there hadn't been the audience as well. I was just the person that put the two things together, but they were already there and they were what made play pieces what it was. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's a really challenging thing. And I suppose I was really fortunate because I know for some founders, it can be a real um, emotional battle as to whether or not to move on because there's so much personality and love and sacrifice has gone in to establishing something. Um, so I suppose in some ways I was really fortunate to not have that internal struggle. I always knew that that's what I wanted. I didn't want it to be all about me. Um, so yeah, fortunately I didn't have that, but I have, you know, I, I'm aware of some founders who are finding it really hard to, to move on from a situation that they might stand down from the role that they're doing, but they want to stay on the board and in an advisory capacity. And you have to say, well, is that fair then on the, the new person coming in to have, you know, that shadow in the background, you know, kind of saying, well, in my day, it was like this, you know. Mm -hmm. and it, so, yeah, there, there, there is that kind of, I think we have to always be really sensitive and really supportive of anybody going into a role that has had these incredibly big boots to fill um, and make sure that we can support them as much as possible to, to sort of carry on with their own vision and, and, and to take it in the, the direction it needs to go in. And did you learn anything during that time that helped you prepare for the current circumstances, do you think? Ooh, I have to say it did cross my mind. I was like, gosh, I'm really glad I'm not you know, promoting events right now. <laughs> <laughs> that would be the entire season would be scuppered. Um, wow, well, anything I've learned. I think, I think what's really interesting is when you do a lot of public events, you suddenly realise now, um, oh, have I vanished? There we go, I'm back. Uh, you really start thinking about the relationships that the audience have with each other. I mean, you know, for play pieces, people were sitting around tables eating and drinking, you know, and they could have been sitting beside somebody they'd never met before. And yeah, you suddenly start thinking, gosh, how, and, and it was the intimacy that was part of the event. And you just think, gosh, we're, we're gonna have, you know, a real struggle thinking about how do we build up audiences again when space is gonna be an issue when psychologically they're going to be concerned about you know that person over there i don't know them are they going to maybe be carrying something you know that there's there's definitely a lot to be thinking about with regards to how we bring the public back into spaces um and still create that lovely intimacy from these unique events that people really enjoy um and yeah i mean i've had a lot of conversations with people about this recently um, and I think that there'll be the twofold. There'll be the kind of people that want to go out and to continue to support something because if we don't, we'll lose it. There's that mentality that use it or lose it kind of um, cultural experience. But then there's also going to be that audience that really are not going to want to go out. And we also have to raise the question as well of if people are going to have disposable income you know you know are they going to want to spend their money on going out to events and you know we really need to question this and if that's the case how do you build up that loyalty with your audience how do you build up that trust again and how do you make sure it's still accessible then to an audience who may not have, even have the money to go even if they wanted to 
So I think it's really interesting. And I think it's also really interesting looking at all the work that's gone online and the impact that that's had. You know, the, the kind of people who maybe wouldn't have dreamed of buying a ticket for the National Theatre are now watching, watching it online. I mean, I think that's incredible, absolutely incredible that they've made this so accessible. So I think, yeah, it's, I, I suppose before, and it's quite interesting, I was looking at a proposal for a, a, a theatre tour recently, and I was looking at it kind of like in the back of my mind, questioning it going, I don't know if you can actually do this because of COVID-19. You know, can we tour theatre still? How's that going to work? Um, it, was, it was fascinating. But equally at the same time, I was like, gosh, there's a real opportunity in this. There's something really exciting about how do we do this? How do we still create these wonderful, live, intimate experiences but with an audience that are possibly, you know, questioning a lot of things. And yeah, so it's, I think certainly what I learned when I was doing play pieces was how, how you put on that event, how you make people enjoy it, what makes it different. And people are always looking for something different and they love the intimacy. But those are the things that are kind of at risk now, I suppose. Mm -hmm. um, so it's very much about how do we, how do we work with people to build up that trust again and yeah maybe maybe it's just an entirely different way of doing things which is really exciting um and i think it also it's just people are just going to have to try things just try it and see if it works i'm a great believer in that if you've got an idea just try it and if it doesn't yeah. work it doesn't work you know no, nothing has been lost um but i think it's i think it would be really interesting to see how the creative sector responds to this when the public are allowed to start gathering again yeah. what that looks like and how we get them out of the house so tell us about lego so you're an accredited lego serious play facilitator Very what does that serious. mean and how do you get to be one <laughs> uh, what does it mean it means um i get to turn up with lego bricks and meet brilliant people doing brilliant things usually they've got a question they want to explore so we focus on that question and I get to ask them questions and they build their answers using Lego. And then we share our answers and we reflect on the answers and then we build some more Lego models. I mean, that, that's it in a nutshell. Really. So we have Lego. We've brought okay. Lego. Good. What do we do? What, what do you want us to do? Okay. Well, let's, I mean, what, what kind of Lego have you? Show me what Lego you've got, first of all. I've got like all the Legos, all like boxes yeah, upon yeah. boxes Box, yeah, and good. all sorts of things. There's a digger. Yeah. There. This thing. <laughs> See, these are all very specific. We need some, we just <laughs> some vagueness. Right. So what I'm going to do, and Rachel can do this as well. Okay. I just want you to grab any five, any five bricks. Any, any five, five bricks. bricks. Any five. five. Like and just, just get the noise, the Lego. Oh, noise. don't you love the noise? Isn't the noise just brilliant? It's like for me, there's two two noises that I think are the definition of anticipation. One is the sound of an orchestra tuning up, and the other is the sound of Lego being poured out of a box. Mm -hmm. Those are just those are just. Or, or the noise of someone standing on Lego. That's that's another <laughs> famous noise. <laughs> right, I have five bricks. All right, if you got five bricks, just stick them together. Okay. Together. Anyway. Together any way you like. Oh, I dropped it. And I hope some people, I hope people watching are doing this as well. If you've got Lego, I should bricks, be showing this happening, shouldn't yeah. I? Yeah. No, that's fine. Just stick them, stick them all together. It doesn't matter what it looks like. Okay. Right. We're done. Okay. okay. We're still 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 yeah, I've got my five bricks. Great. Now, if I, if, oh, very, oh, that's very nice. Yeah, so if I'm doing a work, oh, I love it. I love it. Great, great, great. Pink so, suits you, Keenan. That's a... <laughs> if, if I was with you doing a workshop, I would be saying pick a card, any card. So I have some cards here. But what I'll do is I'll just grab one. Who would like to go first? I need Andrew would like to go first. He was going to be polite, but Andrew would always like to go first. I think so it's Andrew great when people volunteer other volunteers. Well done. I'm fine well to done. go in any order. It could be right. anyone. Andrew. Right. I've got, so on my card, which is what you, if I was doing a workshop with you, I'd say, could you read out what was written on the card? So the card okay. says, please imagine the five brick model you have built is a representation of the universe. Explain mm -hmm. this. So you have to explain to us now 
that, about your model and how it is a representation of the universe. I feel so much pressure in my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> this is worse than any pitch I've ever delivered. Uh, this is a representation of, well, it's um, the universe is made up of building blocks uh, and uh, these building blocks often start out very small or thin <laughs> and they get bigger and bigger over time. And so we have multiple building blocks. Some of them are hanging over the edge as often the things in life hang over the edge. Um, and yeah, and uh, they, they, for, for this building block to work, they all have to work together, which much like the universe, mm -hmm. each part has to work together to make its, its, its final version. Was it was that. <laughs> that, that was, does everybody believe Andrew? Does that like? I actually you? believed oh. Andrew. I, yeah, I believed him. That is the universe. Yeah. You yeah. can buy. You can buy this universe from me now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> in light of COVID, there's a discount on this this universe. <laughs> well, see, I, and that that was, it was beautifully done. And as you were talking about it, did you feel more confident as you were sort of really? thinking about putting the universe into your model you sounded more certain yeah you start to as i think as you go you know it feels very scary at first but once you start getting the narrative going you you, you realize that you can kind of <laughs> continue with that nonsense <laughs> that there was probably there was probably more in there that i could have you know gone on to after that yeah, yeah. no I, I believed you i absolutely believed you it made it made complete sense um who would like to go next are you going to volunteer someone else rachel <laughs> So again, I would ask you to pick a card, but um, yeah. I will just pick one for you. Yep. So, oh, this, this isn't too bad. Don't worry. This is a good one. Please imagine the five brick model you have built is a representation of magic. Explain this. Oh, man. Okay. So obviously this is magic. Um, it appeared out of nowhere. You can see it disappears like that. Right here it is back. Slide of hand. <laughs> Andrew's better. You should have done this one, Andrew. I know. I actually do close up magic. I took the wrong question. <laughs> uh, yeah, and it's um, you know it's just beautiful from different angles. Um, you know what's holding this together? It's incredible. These little things. Like, how does that even work? Look at that. <laughs> I love it. I believe it. That, I can see how that's much. I particularly liked um, the use of the word obviously at the start as well. I, I love it when people say, <laughs> yeah. obviously this model is magic. I mean, that reinforces it as well. So that's, yeah, absolutely. I, I, I believe that as well. Now, I think we only have one volunteer left. <laughs> and I, I, I promise you, I'm just going to pick this at random. I'm not looking at the particularly most difficult one, Rachel. Okay. Let's see your, let's see your model. Oh, hey, this, this is a good one. I think you'll like this one, Rachel. Please imagine the five brick model you have built is a representation of government. Explain oh, don't give her that question. We'll never get, we'll never get <laughs> out of here. We'll be here for days. Oh, come on. <laughs> oh, well, well, I tell you, um, uncharacteristically of me, but characteristically of government, um, all these bricks are three. I did, and this was not purposeful whatsoever. Um, this is a representation of government, and you can see the little pillar box that opens up, and you put stuff mm -hmm. in, and it, closes, mm -hmm. and it can come out the other side. Um, it's also, it's not very good at standing. <laughs> oh, the government's fallen over. <laughs> and also, but it does have a quirky little hat. So mm -hmm. it does try to do a little bit of innovation now and again. We've got a quirky little hat. But I think it just looks like the government, doesn't it? It kind of does. does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It does. That's great. I, I, that's per absolutely perfect. And um, yeah, I, I really like the fact you were sort of pointing to all the different parts of your model to show us which, which bits represented. And of course, what, what's brilliant about that as an exercise is you had no idea what I was going to ask you to do and you stuck all those bricks together. And yet, all of those bricks suddenly started to mean something when we started to talk about what they actually were. So with Lego, what I love about it is you have complete ownership over the model. So if I was to ask so a, a bigger question, which, which could be like, you know, what does culture mean to you, for instance, um, and you built a model about culture, and I would ask you to explain the model. And as you're going through it, you are telling us what those bricks represent and 
you have ownership over that model as well. So when we want to ask questions, we're asking questions about the model. And for me, the huge difference with Lego Series Play and why it works is because you can look at really complex situations and you can ask people questions about those complex situations, but it's depersonalized because you're talking about the model. So if for instance, I went in and I was doing a workshop and one of the things that was coming out, uh, like what are the barriers for you, you know, working at your best ability? And it was actually about communication and somebody was building a model about you know, why there are barriers in their sort of communication within the team. Rather than it becoming, well, I can't do my work because Steve's always sending me emails all the time. Actually, it's a complex model about the difficulties of emails and, and being able to process them. So it doesn't become about blaming Steve for sending too many emails when he could get up and walk to the desk. But suddenly the model becomes about actually it's easier for me to just have a conversation with somebody rather than get lots of emails. And Steve sitting at the table might go, oh, that's really good. I didn't know that about him. But it's, there's no blame. And it allows you to really sort of look at complex issues through the Lego models. Um, and yeah, I'm just trying to think of any sort of other examples. So, yes. so we, we say we're all in our team, right? So say me, Andrew and Keenan are in our little team, you know, um, and we're all, we're all in, by, you know, when we're able to be in our office or even remotely, actually, you could do this remotely at all. And so we're in our team. Do, do people do this at like at team meetings or like in on sessions? Because it's always seems like Lego is a really serious bit of kit. You can build everything and anything with it, but you seldom use it as a tool for conversation. But do you yeah. have people in their businesses? <laughs> Sorry, I've got a little person sneaking in there. That's right. Might come in there. <laughs> yeah, no, people do use it. Absolutely. So um, I, you know, one of the loveliest gigs I've ever done with Lego was um, a new member of staff had joined a media company. And so they wanted to do the staff induction through Lego because it was quite a small, small company. Um, and, you know, when you think about it, I was just like, oh, my God, what a brilliant way of like bringing in a new team member. Like, well, that's really lovely on your first day. So I went in on this guy's first day and we did this sort of team building. So it gave everybody in the team a chance to explain what they did, what they love about the organization, what they do on a personal level as well. So it allowed them all to sort of do all that sort of, so what is it you do? And it allowed them to ask questions about the models, about what it is they do and what the ambitions were for the organization. So basically by the end of the induction workshop, everybody was on the same page. They were like, right, we all know about each other now. We all know what we're aiming for. We all know how we work. And I was saying to them that absolutely they could just do that on a regular basis. They could have their team meetings and they could build a model to show, you know, something that they're really proud of that they've done since the last meeting. They could build a model about some of the challenges that they're facing. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, and, and actually that would allow people to really understand in that whole sort of, you know, 360 degree 3D way, how they might be able to help somebody. You know, if you're saying, actually, I'm finding this really difficult. And in this model, the reason it's difficult is because this is what's happening. Somebody That's else suddenly you know, go, oh, well, I can, I can help you with that. So it, it's a really, really powerful way of helping people into a situation. And, and is there resources online that, you know, businesses can, can get, can download, that can guide them through this stuff? Obviously, I, I'd imagine you do this as a, as a consultative piece, but I mean, I'm just... No, only a, very there... skilled, only a very skilled Lego builder. <laughs> 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 no, I mean, really, you don't need, you don't, I mean, if you were using it just at a team meeting like that, just to update mm -hmm. people, you can just use any Lego to build a yeah. model. Um, and the other thing you can use it for as well is to sort of almost do your to-do list as a, as a Lego model as well. So at the start of the day, you could build a little model to sort of show how you want to feel by the end of the day. What do you want to have achieved? Do you want to have climbed that mm. mountain or, or do you just want to have maybe got some things done and you still have the sort of that ultimate goal? And you can do all of that with any Lego. If you were doing something more complex, like looking at a strategic plan or a uh, team building, or uh, oh, I'm just trying to think of some of the other things I've done. I've done a lot of sort of um, future thinking with organizations as well. Now, when you get into the more complex stuff, the, the Lego kits that the facilitators use, there's a lot of actual method and theory behind the bricks. Mm -hmm. 
which sounds really bonkers, but it's there, there is a lot of logic behind it all. Um, it, it's to do with whether the bricks are transparent, it's to do with shapes and sizes, mm -hmm. it's to do with the functionality of the bricks. Um, it, and the questions as well have to be sort of suitably vague as well to allow mm -hmm. for people to interpret and to use the bricks in a meaningful way. Um, so you don't want to basically provide them with uh, very specific bricks to, to build a, like a model, like your lovely spaceships. You know, yeah. no, there, there's, there's no sort of kits like that. Yeah, no, I, I think it's like, you know, it's, it's something that we often use at the beginning of workshops, not Lego, but I'm now going to use Lego because you've told me this. <laughs> but like, we've often done things where we ask people to bring bring something of meaning to them. But you've got to be able, we, I mean, we did a team away day at Made Brave and that was one of the things we said, bring something small enough to have in your hand that you can then tell a story about yourself. And it's great because people start talking about the thing and it turns into way more than the thing. And yeah. so I can see the power of of, of how the, the Lego um, works. I suppose I, I suppose I was my, my question was more, is there, is there any any one place we can go that we can get starter ideas that just kind of that would you know give us a little bit of a head start that if we were using it how um no not really i'm afraid <laughs> you, you should suggest that to lego <laughs> <I know. laughs> it's, it's a dark art the lego building no i mean it, it, it's it's a facilitation skill if you're using it yeah. in that kind of capacity and you know, every facilitator has to go through a form of training i was actually trained by robert rasmussen who developed the lego series play method um i mean i think what what you can use Lego obviously individually and you can use any bricks for any sort of individual thing. So like for instance, if you're doing a kind of uh, an opportunity to get people to open up, uh, you know, whether it was a sort of a telling, you know, bring something that's meaningful to, for you, what you could also do with that then is you could get people to sort of bring um, Lego that maybe represents uh, something that people don't know about them. That's a question I ask quite a lot in team building. Um, build, build something that people might not know about you. And so you yeah. can build a model. So that's quite a nice, easy thing to do. Um, I mean, there any, are there any other um, exercises or examples, uh, Lindsay, that you've got? Just to give us a bit. I'm, do, I'm just saying that because I'm well, desperate to build something else. Desperate but. to build something. It's, well, that's the other thing that's sort of quite hard is um, some of the sort of exercises that we do, everybody has the same kit. Now, this is another thing that's really important. So at the start of any LEGO series play workshop, um, what happens is everybody has their own kit um like a little bag in fact i've got a wee bag that so everybody would have one of these mm -hmm. a bag that's that is your um first sort of basic lego series page kit bag um so everybody would open that and the first thing i would ask and you can do this with your lego in front of you just now so grab some grab some lego we just have to imagine you've all got the same the same stuff got some yep. you got some yeah you got some rachel yeah, so we have to just imagine you've all got your little uh, Lego bag in front of you and you open them up and I would say to you, okay, I'm going to give you a minute. You haven't got a minute, by the way, you've got less than a minute. I'm going to give you a minute <laughs> to build a tower. Okay. Build a tower. Tower. So just... Could be doing this for the camera as well. Just be building a tower. I know, I know. Building a tower. <laughs> build a tower. Yeah, actually... I can't. Um... Go that way. Can I do that. <laughs> Whoa! Oh. Build a tower. Oh, build a. Oh gosh! I keep getting the same instruction, guys. I'm not sure where. <laughs> um, There's mine. I've got little Christmassy tree type things. I don't know what I, mine's part of. Mine's just, just a wee bit too functional. I, 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 I'm slightly worried that this is like too deep into my personality. I'm a bit more functional than I thought I was. I have to say, I do quite like overanalyzing people's Lego models. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very nice. Okay, have we all have we all got a, a tower in front of us? Yeah, we all have a tower. Yeah. Yep. Great. Okay, so Rachel, I'd like you to tell us about your tower. So my tower <laughs> is a block of flats that. Um, you kind of sneak in here mm -hmm. where the fire is. It's quite an exciting block of flats. And it has a swimming pool on, <laughs> on the side and a um, helicopter pad on the top. Brilliant. Sounds very practical. <laughs> <laughs> practical. <laughs> Great. 
<laughs> Wonderful, thank you. Uh, and Andrew? Yeah, well, my tower um, comes from the set of the film Elf. Ooh, so yes. it's Christmas tree themed. Um, yeah, uh, it's kind of half of a Christmas tree and... Um, oh. <laughs> And half of not a Christmas tree. It's <laughs> <laughs> good. Yeah. I like it. Very nice. Thank you. And Keenan, what? Yeah. Let's have a look at your tower. So mine's. Um, I, don't, I feel like mine's not quite as exciting, um, but it is made out of 100% plastic. Um, <laughs> it's probably more stable than the others. Mm. Uh, this has a really simple design, you know. It's just easy to relate to. Uh, yep. Yep. That's very nice. nice. Very nice. Um, any any observations about each other's towers? Mine is clearly the best. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a lot harder to describe something than I thought it would be. And I I didn't really think about when putting it together what it would look like. And Andrew's Andrew's looks like his thing. Like the tree he said it was. Yeah. It really does look like something. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was just luck. Something. It was kind of luck because I picked up a piece that was that had all those pieces on it. So. <laughs> well, they're all they're all definitely something. But I think that that's really interesting. What you were just just saying there, Rachel, about um, you don't think about it as you're building it, and that's one of the things you get the, the very simple instruction: build a tower. And usually, I would give like one or two minutes. So that time pressure for people, they just start building they just start putting bricks together and they're not thinking about what they're doing and then when I ask them to explain their tower all of a sudden they start to almost add this whole backstory and narrative and purpose behind their tower um, and it, it becomes really interesting because um, without completely over analyzing lego models um, they can be very revealing about how people work um, some people, for instance, when you're, you're building the tower, they want to colour coordinate it. They want to make sure they've got a foundation, a strong base, or some people want to make sure theirs is the tallest. Some people want to make sure they use every brick. Some people want to um, make sure it's symmetrical. Some people want it to be functional. Some people need it to be about people. And it, it's genuinely in one really simple exercise, you can find out an awful lot about how somebody works. And that's really invaluable when you're actually in a team environment because, yeah, all of a sudden you're seeing, okay, I see how you work, I see how you work, I see how you work. And that's really, really useful for, for people. That's very <laughs> it's so cool. I think we should definitely just keep getting together and doing our towers. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm conscious we've got 10 minutes left um, and I'm wondering if anybody that is um, listening has any questions. If you do have any questions, pop them in the Q&A um, below or into the chat. Um, or if you, if you want to show us your Lego, if we can turn on your camera, mm -hmm. I'm sure we can if you've brought any. Um, I don't know if we can actually, it's a webinar, isn't it? Doesn't let us do that. Um, so yeah, pop in any questions. Um, I suppose while we're waiting on anyone popping in any questions, um, I, I'm in and um sorry my, my question for you Lindsay, is you know where do you go for inspiration you know do you have any heroes any mentors mm -hmm. that's such a good question um where do i go for inspiration i am quite open to um inspiration coming from all around really um it's taken me a long time to accept that, you know, life doesn't go the way that you plan it. And sometimes, yeah, sometimes there's like all these opportunities and you never know where they're going to lead to next. So it's not about, oh, it's not just about saying yes to every opportunity that comes along. But um, I find it really inspiring when you're working on something and you suddenly realize that like, something you worked on three years ago actually was incredibly relevant to what you're doing now. Um, and I, I find all that kind of stuff really inspiring. I also find it really inspiring to, and it's kind of connected to make sure that you don't stay within your sector. It kind of goes back to what Rachel was saying that I kind of pop up 
here, there and everywhere. Because I think, it's, I find it really fascinating. Like Rachel was telling me the other day about the clothing company that is working with homeless people. And I was just like, oh my God, that's such a fantastic, like that is inspiring stuff. Um, it's, it's so unrelated to my work and I, it just fuels me and it makes me start questioning is there another way of doing what I love doing, but in a more meaningful way as well? And I think, I just, I just, I, I think inspiration is all around as long as you're open to it. And, you know, I, I don't think there's sort of anything that like somebody, I've, I've been asked to do a piece of research um, with architects at the moment. I have nothing, you know, it's not my, my normal sort of client base, but I'm going to be working with them because I think I could learn something really interesting about, the, you know, that sector that I don't normally do. And who knows when that might be useful in the future. Um, so, yeah, I just, I suppose I just put a lot of faith in getting excited. If I can get excited about it, then I want, I want to, to do it. Um, and uh, yeah, I think, I think other people and other people's work is just really inspiring. Um, and I read a lot of books and I think that, you know, sometimes just reading, um, I mean, I, my favorite book by far that's helped me through some very difficult times has been The Alchemist. Uh, it's a really incredible book and yeah, it, re it really helped me kind of focus on what I wanted to do and how I wanted to do it. So yeah, I think, I think you find inspiration mm. in all sorts of places. You just got to be open to it. Can I ask maybe, a, maybe not a controversial question, but more, I hope it's not controversial. I don't mean it to be, but like. I love a controversial question. Go but like, you know, you seem to be a person that's very interested in doing good, you know, and all the roles that you do. And obviously brands like Lego have big challenges at the moment because everything they make is plastic. And I, I suppose you, you might have more insight than others on what brands, how brands like Lego are adapting to that. Because obviously, you know, I see we, we've all got these boxes of plastic here. I've got one and, you know, and someone will bring one or another 10 boxes of those plastic to my son every birthday, every Christmas for mm -hmm. the next however many years. And, you know, every time you do one of these sessions, you've got the, the bag of plastic and, you know, and I'm just, I suppose I'm just interested to know, is there conversations at Lego on that or, you know? Oh yeah, absolutely. Okay. In fact, you can download their environmental impact report. Uh, it's it's there on their their website. But they're making huge changes. So they're introducing um, Lego made out of recycled plastic as well. So that's mm -hmm. a, a major major thing. Um, they're also um, stopping uh, buying. I think it's it's either BP or Shell. They didn't renew their contract with them as well because of the environmental impact of those companies. So they're trying to source a more ethical um, producer of, of the materials that they need as well. Yeah. Um, and the other thing I would also kind of point out is that some Lego has been around for a very, very long time. It tends to get passed on an awful lot. Mm -hmm. um, you know, people have it in their attics and give it to their grandchildren, the grandchildren save it for their children. Um, we buy a lot of Lego, but I think we also hang on to a lot of Lego as well. Um, and I think that's that's really interesting. And I yeah, I totally take on board your comment about the Lego kits. And actually, most of them get reused. I will just show you what. Yeah. Before the lock, lockdown, I was. Uh, and I didn't mean to be a pointy much. finger. <laughs> no, 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 but it's, it's but I, I it's true because I questioned myself as well. I was like, you know, I was um, buying plastic bags to put all the the kits in. And then I was like, ah, this is gross. I don't like all of this. So yeah, I have now separated it and you have no idea how therapeutic it is. But that is now all my Lego bricks and kits ready to go for the next workshop in a box. And they will just get washed and put back into the box ready for the next workshop. So yeah, and I, I, think, I think it is a massive thing. And I, I did think about it. There's something quite ironic about using plastic to maybe talk about things like climate action. Mm -hmm. But but Lego are making huge strides towards um, engaging positively with the environment and everything. So yeah, absolutely. I think it's a really valid valid question. Um, but yeah, and it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's interesting for me just from a brand perspective as well, just to watch Lego adapt. You know, because obviously I'd imagine now a lot of their revenue comes from the Lego movies, and I you know, and I wonder like looking through you know through the eyes of someone that runs a business and through the eyes of you know, they do seem like uh, a brand that, that do care and, and that are trying to make positive change. I, you know, I have read a lot of the stuff that you've said in the past because I was interested actually when we visited Lego House around that time. Mm -hmm. um, yep. And so it's, so it's, 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 it's interesting and, and it's whether they, 
you know, that creativity and that brand is obviously being brought to life in different ways now, you know, via animation, via television. And, and it, you know, and I suppose it'd be interesting to see in the future if mm. Lego blocks exist in a different format, in a different way, and that creativity just lives through the brand. And I, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that just because we've had Lego and we've loved it. Yeah. You know, I think, you know, brands still need to adapt. Yeah, maybe they'll go back to their roots because Lego originally was a wooden model. He was a toy maker. And, you know, mm. actually the original Lego was made out of wood, which is fascinating as well. Um, mm. But yeah, it's, it, yeah, it's an ever, it's an ever shifting um, playing field, but I think they're definitely trying to adapt. Um, and I think that's great. And there's loads of lessons to be learned from that. Um, in fact, I think Lego is one of the largest tire manufacturers as well. Like, <laughs> it's like there's also <laughs> really random things, that, you know, about Lego. Um, but yeah, it's they're they're definitely doing their bit. And I think, yeah, I don't feel too bad about using Lego because I think it get my bricks in particular get used a lot. You know, whether yeah. that's on on a personal level, um, but also <laughs> on a professional one as well. And they all get cleaned and sterilized and everything. So, you know, it's all fine. But I, I do try to reuse as much as possible. Yeah. Uh, uh, can I just add, sorry, Keena, were you going to ask a question there? Uh, yeah, well, there, there's just actually, there's a question here, um, just in the Q&A tab there. Um, I thought I'd read out. Uh, so this one's mm -hmm. from Kirk. Um, so she's saying, uh, you mentioned that an idea will return to you years later and you find mm. it relevant to the current project. Do you keep notes on any ideas, thoughts that you have um, so that you can reference them later and you ever use that as part of your creative process? Ooh, that's a really good question. Um, yeah, I, I tend to sort of hang on to everything. Um, yeah, and project notes, everything. Yeah, I'm like, God, I've got like job application forms going back like 15 years. I don't get rid of those either because you never, you never know when. Um, I mean, and also you know what it's like when you've had several sort of different jobs and different roles. You've got different application forms and things like that. Uh, so there's always, there's always things within those that are relevant to something else at some other point in the future. So yeah, I, I kind of don't really throw anything away. Um, I, I like to, yeah, I, I always, I, like, I'm a great believer in serendipity. I think serendipity is an amazing thing. And I just love those moments where you're like, oh, that's why I was doing that. That all makes sense now. Um, but yeah, I think, I think hanging on to project files as long as possible is really, really good if you are working across a sort of a, a broad spectrum of projects. Um, and yeah, I think... Yeah, I think it's definitely a really good idea. Note, notebooks, I've got full of ideas and yeah, I think you've got to. And it's always really fun revisiting them as well because there's still nuggets in there. So mm -hmm. yeah, definitely notebooks or whatever works for you. But um, kind of Lego models, maybe even if, you know, <laughs> for each project. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, yeah it's, it's a really, really good idea because you never know when, when those notebooks and quotes and, and sometimes it can be about, oh, what was it he said? And you've got to go back and look at it written down again. Um, but yeah, hugely, hugely important. Definitely. Cool. Um, so, Lindsay, if you, if you could leave us with one parting thought or bit of advice for today, what would it be? Now, you're a freelancer and, you know, mm -hmm. freelancers are finding it tough at the moment. And, um, you know, I work a lot with people in the freelance community who are portfolio career, like yourself, who kind of, some people are really busy. Some people have lost an incredible amount of work and are finding it very difficult to move forward. So it's a really... Mm -hmm. Um, exactly like I like the boat um, idea we're all in a different storm I actually also like we've all got the same map but we're walking different terrain mm -hmm. um, kind of thing. so but what could you give us like a bit of advice or parting thought for that kind of for the freelancers in the world around us um yeah I think now is probably a really good time to to stop and think about what it is you want to put into the world and I think being able to to really understand why you are doing what you're doing um, especially when you might be feeling anxious or stressed out um, remind yourself ground yourself in why you're doing what you're doing and what is it you want to put out into the world that isn't there already and just use that as your 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 guiding star, basically your guiding principle, 
that that's what you're working towards. And yep, there's going to be obstacles in the way and the seeds are going to get choppy or the terrain's going to get choppy, like all of these metaphors. But basically, if you know what you're aiming for, then that that's what you should focus on and all the other stuff will will figure itself out. But if yeah, it's it's really focus on what matters to you and just keep going, keep going. It's going to be okay. <laughs> Well, thank you very much, Lindsay. Uh, I think you've all, you've given us all plenty of ideas to take back to our meeting rooms, businesses. Uh, I'll certainly be playing with more Lego um, at Please Maid do. Grave. Uh, I think we had the idea before we were going to have a full Lego wall, so we might bring that to life. Um, yeah, we need to do that. We do need to do that. We do. We, we saw that in Denmark where they were holding up pillars. And Berlin, actually, we saw ah, Berlin. Ah, so we did, yeah. That's probably yeah. The, the, before we were hungover. <laughs> That's yeah. why. Imagine <laughs> we don't just roam around Europe together. Just, <laughs> That's not what we do, but... <laughs> Um, no, great, Lindsay. I think um, we, we might also pick up a little com uh, conversation with you on maybe running a session at Made Brave as well or um, writing hey, some exactly. content for us at some point as well. It might be nice. Because um, I'd like to get more of that Lego knowledge out of your brain and out <laughs> into the world. Um, so thank you everyone for hanging about and uh, joining us tonight for this session, um, which was the fifth session. Uh, we will be running another one next Tuesday. Um, and as we said, if you want to look back at any of the other previous sessions, we will we'll be placing this one along with all the others on the CEC website and on the Made Brave YouTube channel as well. So whichever one is easier for you to get to. Um, I'm sure if you want to reach out to Lindsay with any questions that you were maybe too scared or timid to do here if there are such thing um, i'm sure she'd be happy to oblige as well thanks for joining us and we'll see you again next week thanks everybody see you next week bye thanks. bye there we go that's everyone out that was us. Brilliant, oh, Liz, Thank you so much. That was oh, so. Thank you. You know, something really positive and buoyant. I was like, yes, yes, <laughs> and I agree. <laughs> I like honestly, I'm. Just, I can be so disgustingly optimistic, though. <laughs> like, sometimes I'm just like, oh, it's all gonna be fine. But yeah, no, it's great, but you, God, I realised how much, how long I could talk about Lego seriously. I think that's quite alarming because I'm going, God, the hour's gone. It's like I could keep going. There's still so much more. <laughs> but yeah, no, thank you so much. I mean, that that was great, and I, I hope that people do manage to sort of just use a few a few pieces of Lego just to do some stuff in their offices or at work or at home. Definitely, definitely. Well, it's been great. No, thank you so much. I really enjoyed that. Yes. Definitely, definitely be using some. Definitely. Brilliant. Well, we had some people I've seen, I'm getting texts saying that was great. Thank you. And just the people putting on, on the, on the, somebody put, um, Kenneth Archibald, I don't know a Kenneth. Do you know Kenneth? Mm. No. Not that we should always know everybody who comes no. in. <laughs> So they thought it was great. So <laughs> that's, that's really nice. Oh, well, I mean, feel free to, um, you know, when you put it out, to add my Twitter handle and things like that, or yeah. LinkedIn, LinkedIn, all that kind of stuff. Very happy if people want to, to stay in touch. That's not a problem at all. Perfect. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for taking the time to join no, us. It was great. Thank you. It's been great. But what an experience. Thank you. <laughs> stay safe, everyone. Take bye. care. Bye. 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 bye.